Hey everyone, so today I will show you how to use the Film Aesthetics 2.0 power grid. Let's get started right at the beginning. So you've probably downloaded it and now you have this zip folder in place and just double click to unzip this one or your preferred program for doing this job. Now you have the 2.0 folder, that's the newest version at the time being. And all these DRX files are power grades and in this folder you find the LUTs either for ACES, so they all work within ACES CCD. That means they need an input of ACES CCD and will give you an output of ACES CCD. And here are the log C files and these ones need RE log C and RE white gamma as an input and will also give you an output of RE log C and RE white gamut. You'll also find a PDF in here that explains pretty much everything too. So you will find some information of what the LUTs are inspired by. For example, print log 01 is inspired by a modern 2383 scan that had available and so on and so forth. You will also find some infos to the power grades, to the two bonus looks and also a bit of info of how I built them, how to use them and the node tree presets. And if you wish to, you could also fill out this Google form to give me some feedback, which would be much appreciated. All right, so to get started, let's do a new power grade album in here. You could right mouse click and say add power grade album and you could call this one however you prefer. Let's call it film as that dx 2.0 version 2 and now I can right mouse click in here and say import and head to the folder we just unzipped. So here we go and you could select all of the DRX files and hit import and you will have them available in here. You could also use the list view however you prefer. All right and now let's install the LUTs. So go back to your finder and just copy and paste this folder or if you already have my demystify color folder in place you could select this one and just hit command c head to your lut folder and paste it i have the demystify lut folder in place i also have this working folder in place which is called exactly the same so i will do a new one but you don't have to do this all right so they're in place now and now let's go to our luts folder and all the way up, hit the right mouse button and say refresh. Now they should be here. All right, so you will see them and they are ready to go. But before we begin, let's start with some color management basics. So you see, these are red shots and I'm debearing them in the new IPP2 color science, or let's say the latest color science from red, because it's not new anymore. As color space, I have red, white, gamut, RGB, and as a gamma curve, I'm using log3 G10. Normally, I make a group and I'm saying red to Alexa. And now I have this group pre-clip level available and the group post-clip level available. And I've called it red to Alexa or I need to transform it to Alexa because this set of LUTs needs an RE log C input. The key thing is we need to transform this footage to the correct input of this LUT. So to do this, let's go to our open effects and call up the color space transform, drag and drop. And now let's say red, white gamma RGB, red log 3G10 to RE Alexa and RE log C. We don't need any tone mapping. Sometimes we can use the saturation compression if we see some problems with the footage, but normally we don't need to do this. But sometimes it's better to get a smoother transition from the red white gamut RGB color space to the RE Alexa color space. Now we can call this one ID, which basically stands for our input transform. And normally I'm using my LUTs in the timeline level, so at the very end of my node tree. But before I'm using the LUT, I'm just adding two nodes. And at the very end, I'm using the RE log C to Rec 709 LUT. You can get this LUT 
for free on the ARRI website. It's the latest one and it has a bit of an adapted black point and some colors look better than with the one that ships within Resolve, which is this one, but you can also use this one. It's the classic K1S one lot, but it's a bit older and I prefer the newer version of it. So let's call this one Rec 709. And now we have our color managed pipeline in place. We are color managing manually. So basically we're taking our red footage to log C and we are displaying it at the very end of our node tree to the display we are currently viewing the footage on, which in my case is a monitor calibrated to Rec 709. And normally I would use my LUTs right before the Rec 709 transform. So everything I'm doing in the clip level or all my grading gets processed with this look LUT and also the display transform. So for example, we can use the print look one and you see this a before and after the print look two, which is before and after look two before and after look one before and after and the bonus grade before and after. Let's view it on another shot with some greenery. This is bonus two before and after look one before and after look two before and after print look one before and after and print look two before and after. But you've probably recognized these are not LUTs that you slap on and you call it a day because they are not too aggressive as they are meant to be a baseline but you still need to create your footage underneath these LUTs. And I've made this on purpose because I don't want to have a really aggressive LUT that I may also need to fight against in my grade. So that's the reason why I did them really gentle. Some are even more aggressive than others, but I think you get the point. So let's go with the print look one, for example, in this shot. And what you can do, let's label this one, let's look. You can also add a serial afterwards and go to your curves and for example you can grab the black point and drag it down. I will open the scopes up real quick for you. So this was before and if you say okay I want my black point a bit lower. Now we'll also turn on some output blanking so we don't have these black spots in our scopes. So let's say your black point is too high for your taste, you can add a serial after your look and still adjust the black point. You could do this with the curves for example. So you see before and after and also before and after with both of them. Or another technique would be to go to your log wheels and just use the shadow wheel and drag this one down to your liking. And you could also adjust the low range of how much of your signal should get affected. And last but not least, you could also use the HDR wheels for this, but make sure to color manage them correctly, which is Ari Alexa and Ari Loxy in our case, and use either the shadow, dark or black part or a combination of all of them to get the desired black point you want. Don't forget to label it. And I think I'm going with the first technique, so my curves, and let's say I'm happy with this kind of black point and now I will do all my grading in the clip level. Obviously I would normally use a fixed node tree. We can also look to this one and try to just use the offset wheel with a bit of gain. And as you can see with just like four knobs, you can get really nice results. Obviously I would need to refine the greens a bit and stuff like that, but that's not the point of this tutorial. Also keep in mind, this is just stock footage. So if you have footage that is shot more for film emulation, for example, this would be even nicer and easier to grade and you will get better results faster. All right. Let's look at this shot, but maybe use a different look now. So let's go to the timeline level and delete these two. And let's go to the power grades folder. And we have another look in here. That's the look 03 and make sure to use the log C one and not the ACCCD one as we are in log C at the moment and just drag and drop. And you see this before and after. And this one looks really nice too. So before and after, obviously as we created this one, 
it's not the right thing so before and after and another one so before and after actually this one is looking pretty nice straight out of the box to be honest and you get some nice color separation from the bluer tones and their skin tone okay so in here maybe just try to open up the gamma a bit and i think counterfeit and also open up the gain a bit and you see you already have a pretty nice looking image with really minor effort and as we're already talking about power grades let's go through all the others for example you can also use this vintage lens effect but again make sure to not use the ccd one which nearly happened to me but the log c one and as you can see this is a before and after i hope you can see this on the stream and basically this blurs and darkens the edges a bit and you can always go into the compound node and adjust it to your taste for example you can go to the darken one and push down the gain even more or go to the blur and blur it even more or also less however you prefer and also with the look 3 you can always go in and adjust it to taste also with the mdf curve you just drag and drop it and you're all set and basically what this one does is a kind of a frequency separation maybe we need to go in here and you see it a bit better so you see all these very sharp detailed parts get a bit blurred which usually makes it a bit nicer for the eye depending on the look you're going for and it's a great tool if you want to use some grain afterwards to blur the image a bit before so the grain sits better in the image speaking of grain in the post clip node tree you should find like a setup that i'm recommending so you see there is the look and the black offset also i'm using the mdf curve and the vintage lens before the grain and as a bonus in here you have a grain preset and also a halation preset and i would always use the halation before the mdf curve and the vintage lens blur oh and i'm just seeing that i did it wrong so you should put the look afterwards and not before i did it in the wrong order so drag and drop it at the end again and basically this is your halation you see where there are bright highlights facing dark pixels you will get a bit of a say a reddish glow and you should use this before the vintage lens and the mdf curve as it's better to have the sharp edges so the halation works a bit better then this is our vintage lens blur you see the difference clearly in here our mdf curve and also the grain and keep in mind as we are seen referred you don't have to use all the things at 100 percent so you can dial in just a tiny amount of relation for example dial your vintage lens blur back the mdf curve is really aggressive so just use a small amount of this one and you can also adjust your grain to taste and even your look and that's not only true for the power grade but you can also use the plots with a key output that's not one two so for example i think this footage feels even better if i'm using look three on around 50 percent than on one so let's keep it at 50 and the great thing about this scene referred looks is you could also add a layer mixer node and basically now it's doing nothing because this one gets layered on top and let's say on top of my look 3 power grade i want to try and layer the look 1 but not with an intensity of 1 but just let's say 30 percent and you see the before and after there are some minor differences and also if i turn that one on and off maybe even get some more of this in to see the effect a bit better and usually this leads to really nice results and i think this roll off in here with the print look one mixed together to the look three looks really nice obviously it's a matter of choice if you want it more blue and a bit more contrasty or a bit softer and neutral but i think you get the point and that's a really nice idea of how to mix looks and you could also say okay let's try 33 percent of this look 33 percent of this look and even add another one at 33 percent so we are at 100 but mix three looks together so maybe try bonus two or print look two and you see another really nice result if we are mixing all this together 
especially in here I think that works really nice straight out of the box and this is before and after and definitely enhances the skin tone and the color separation. All right, it's a pretty long tutorial already, but just want to go real quick to the ACES part. If you want to use ACES, I would suggest you do the same workflow. So let's do a group and say red to ACES CCT. And in the group preclip level, we want to use not the color space transform, but the ACES transform. And we are going from red white gamut RGB log 3G10 to ACES CCT. And I'm always recommending to use the latest version available, which is 1.3 at the time being. And with this version, you also get a really nice gamut compressor. And I would always turn this one on and use the reference gamut compress. This is our IDT again. And the very end of our node tree, we are going to Rec 709, but not with the RE lot. We are using another ACES transform in here. And now we need to go from ACES CCT to Rec 709. And in between this sandwich, we can use all the LUTs and looks again, but this time make sure to use the ACES CCT ones. So for example, we can switch this LUT. I think we've used the print look one in here. So change this one to the ACES one. Print look two in here. And the power grade is a bit more complicated. So delete this one for now and add a corrector node and reconnect it. And now just drag and drop the CCT one in here. And we are all set again. Obviously everything that's not related to some kind of input you can use either in CCT or in the log C workflow. So the grain, for example, you can just enable this one and you're fine. All right, that's it for this tutorial. It's a really long one, but I hope this helps and you enjoy working with all the LUTs. And I hope this lets you get started even quicker with knowing how to use these LUTs and get used to them. Always feel free to send me some feedback and thanks for your support. See you soon. Bye.